Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. So, a long time ago, in a space station far, far away, perhaps, I um, I was talking about building up this system over here, and this is where I'm going to start talking about the probe rockets that we can launch in um, in order to get data from distant, uh, distant, interesting places. So there are two particular ones I need. One of them is for the energy science, and that requires me to launch um, space probes from Norve, uh, from sorry, Kalidas orbit. That's the sun of the solar system. So we need to, we need to launch them from there in order to get um, sun, sun, sun related data. And we also need to launch them from an asteroid field in order to get asteroid data, and that's for astronomical science. So there's those two ones that are waiting that, for me to do for me to do those so that I can get the uh, the tier four science up and running. Now, in order to get that, I need to look, I need to build a number of things. So I need to have a system for launching the probe rockets from um, f from those from those appropriate places. So I've got over here in my ma in my main base area, I've got this this machine here that's building up the um, the launching the, the rocket the rocket silos for launching space probes. So the, the, these can launch rockets from space in order to get you useful space data. And they actually not only do they launch the probes, you can also launch rockets from them in order to get this stuff. Now I've got a huge backlog of this at the moment from from when I was launching them from on Norvis, which is a it's slightly wasteful because of the amount of um, resources I was getting through in order to bring them up here. However, on the flip side, it's lots there's lots of it up here, and, I, and I'll need to work through that for quite a long time before I actually need to launch any more from here. So we're building those up. Uh, that was delayed a little bit by the the shortages of um, of heat shield tiles that I was talking about in the previous episode. But now we've got that fixed to an extent to the point where it is it is working well enough. So that's that's good. Then over here, we're um, so we we then we so I was picking those up, taking them off to other places, installing them, and then I'm able to, and then in theory at least I'm able to launch the probe rockets. So there's a few things you need for that. So up here, as you can see, we've got this this machine here is making the actual probe rockets themselves. It takes in quite a lot of different things. We need cargo rocket sections, which fortunately we've got quite a lot of. They just seem to turn up here every time a, a rocket arrives, so that's handy. You need a bit of solid rocket fuel, uh, which so I'm making that from uh, from light oil because whilst I do ha I've got liquid rocket fuel up here in huge quantities being brought from Asalia. I don't really have any of the other intermediaries for it, so I can't make the solid rocket fuel because you can't turn the liquid back into the solid. You can't freeze it or anything. Put it back. Put it back in the cylinders. That doesn't work. So I'm needing to make this here, and I'm doing that from the um, from light oil, which I have a fair amount of from my coal liquefaction, which I admit isn't isn't the best way to produce oil. It's a bit inefficient. It uses quite a lot of coal to do so. Um, However, I don't seem to have run out of coal yet. Maybe at some point in the future, I will shift the entire base over to instead of running on um, running on coal liquefaction to actually bringing up oil from Asalia, that um, oily moon I've got. So we'll need another spaceship to bring that up because now now I can transport liquids reasonably easily because I've got spaceships. Before it wasn't really practical because in order to transport liquids, you had to put them in barrels, and that's that's horrible. So that's why I've been using coal liquefaction. So here, yes, we are making the um, we are making the the rockets. Uh, we need aeroframe scaffold, holmium solenoids, and iridium. So that's that's why down here, I'm basically bringing in all of the exotic materials, um, and we're making so we're we're making the plates for all three. Then we're making the um, the cables and the solenoids and the scaffold and so on, all the way up here. So so all of these are just making all of those bits and pieces that need to go into the into the rocket parts. Now the interesting part about this is that those rockets are then being put into these um, into these yellow chests here. And that means that we've then got this spaceship up here that does the run to and from this the uh, this sun orbit, and this one is requesting ten rocket, pro ten space probe rockets, and ten star probes. And that's filling up up, up here in, the, in this chest because they're quite big and chunky. They don't they don't stack at all. But fortunately, you don't need very many of them. So this one chest is plenty for all of that. We've then got this machine here that's making the actual star probes, and here again we're bringing this. This is the sort of thing again we require loads and loads of heat shielding for this. This is another place where that's potentially a problem, and is why I'm trying to get heat shield tiles onto the um, onto the LTN system and brought over here. Same with the rocket control units. Uh, rocket fuel is coming up from below as described before. Holmium solenoids we're making already, and then the flat solar panels. That's another one that I've had to put to try to put onto the LTN. And as you can see, it's not working brilliantly at the moment. We've only got one in here, um, and we need ten for each one of these we want to make. So I could I could give it some some of these out of my own inventory to make the other couple that we need. In fact, let's do that. So there we go. Now that'll make that'll finish off the um, the, the um, what do you call it? It's the, the the star probes we need. 
They get loaded into here. They get passed over straight up into the, into the spaceship by the logistic bot. I've got 35 of them up here, which is probably un, uh, excessive. It's more than is needed, but I don't see any harm in having having plenty. Um, and this spaceship will then, once it's got up to 10 of each, it should then automatically launch. It hasn't, which is a bit perplexing. Oh, it's because this hasn't emptied. All right, so yes. Then, like every other good um, spaceship that's taking things both ways, it will. Let, we're watching here for... Uh, ten, at least ten of these star probes, at least ten of the rockets, uh, being in Norbis orbit and not having any of the space star probe data. So it's because this isn't unloading quick, uh, sufficiently quickly. We've got still got a few hundred left in here. In fact, let's show it. Let's show it working. So let's take these out of here and pick up some more of these because this is all wired together. And now, plip, the spaceship will leave. Now, while it's on its way, let's have a look at Kalidus orbit, and we'll talk about what's going on over there. So, in Kalidus orbit, I've got this tiny little facility here, and this is all. This is this, this is because we're generating power up here for the um, from the massive solar panels. This is literally all that's required for this. We've got um, a landing point here for the spaceship clamp for the spaceship to land up against. Then we've got a robot port here with <laughs> one robot in it, which is all we need. But when the spaceship arrives, and I'll fast forward until that happens because. There's no point in just talking about it when it's going to happen as well. Here it comes, very slowly. And here it comes, at long last. <laughs> that, was, that took a lot longer for me than it did for you. Bloop. There we go. So, my logistics bot now is flying back and forth with the, um, with the, with the rockets and the... Um, uh, probes and uh, these are getting loaded in here and now it takes a little while to turn the rocket the rocket in to, to prepare the rocket for launch we say so once this bar fills up we've then we've already got the cargo lo loaded in I think um, or maybe we haven't maybe that no that gets put in once the rocket's finished so the rocket so the rocket will be finished it'll put in the um, the satellite and then it will launch basically this is this is works in exactly the same way as the vanilla rocket does except you only actually need to deliver one rocket to it in order for it to launch so it's, it's a bit um, a bit quicker and easier from that point of view so there's that bot working really hard emptying the um, <laughs> emptying the chest I, if I was a bit less cruel I'd probably put a few more bots over here but um, I just didn't have them in my inventory at the time so it's um, one bot it is but as you can see it's it that's that's plenty we don't we don't need more than that because the uh, it takes so long for the uh, for the rockets to be launched anyway. So now it's ready. It puts the um, the rocket comes out, and once it's out, it will get the uh, the satellite put into sorry the probe put into its little satellite. And we've got a different type of rocket as well for this, which is all very nice. There's lots of lots of interesting extra little bits of um, graphics. So there we go. There's the probe being put in, and now the rocket launches. And as you're probably used to from launching vanilla rockets, we've now got massive quantities of science data in here. That's being unloaded quickly by my teams of um, inserters. And then we're dumping that onto this belt to go into the ship. Now, as, as, as uh, this is the old design of ship where, where I'm using a belt and inserters and, and a warehouse to store the stuff. But largely because, well, I don't get through this fast enough for it to actually matter at all. And this is a much, much easy, smaller, simpler, easier system to implement. We should now have exactly a thousand. Oh no, no! Now we've put we passed a thousand over, but we're waiting for this to run another ten, to, uh, rather another nine times to load this up to load this up to ten thousand of these um, uh, packs, and then the ship will be ready to launch. So we won't watch it for the whole time it's doing that. We'll go away and look at something else. As you can see, the ships then come in. They land here. They unload the uh, those those packs onto this onto this belt, which goes into this station over here. Oh, this this works in exactly the same way that every other LTN station on my entire space station works. So we're we're loading up in here until we've got a full row of them, and then a train can come in and take them away. When the train does come in and take them away, it'll bring them over to here, uh, specifically this station, and this is where we empty them all out onto the into the into the um, energy process, science processing area. So over here, we're building up energy science. And there's, there's, as usual, there's, there's four packs required for this, or rather four data cards required for this. We've got the sort of the lightning tree thing, thing um, of 
the, this this one at the top. What's, what, I don't. I can't. I'm not even sure what they're called from here. Um, we've got so these these ones, and most of this is, is fairly straightforward. We're bringing in memory cards. We're hitting we're hitting them with um, particle streams in a, in a in an area where we're bringing coolant to take that again, and that produces all of the data we need here. The thing about this is how rarely it actually the, the system actually works. So if we look at this particular one. We'll see that only 20% of the time do we produce boson data. The other 79% of the time is a junk data card coming out. So you can see here we've got a lot of a lot of the grey data cards and a few of the um, the actual purple data cards that we want. And that's why I've had to put in two of these machines in order to get it running sufficiently quickly that it basically I have to boost it up to, because this runs every five seconds and I need one I need one every five seconds, but it only works a fifth of the time. I need to have got these machines up to about five times speed between them. So we've got three point six from that one and two point eight from that one. So between them, that's okay, that's sufficient. Next up we've got this one which produces um, it 30% of the time, which is slightly better. And so with the uh, speed modules I put in here, and this, and with this wide area beacon as well, be speeding everything up, that is fast enough. We're producing, we're producing the data just about quickly enough there. And as you can see, I say that actually we're not. These um, these machines are not all running, so we're producing, not producing that quite as quickly as I'd like. I need I need to have another one of these machines because that seems to be the slow point in, in, in the system. Um, but this is again, it's, it's relatively simple. It's basically the same recipe as the other one. We have in some some, some colourful clouds coming in. We have some data. Um, oh, and, oh, and this one we have to use. We have to bring in other data from earlier in the um, in the in the chain as well. So we're putting a bit of load on the systems further down as well. So that could potentially be a problem later. But we'll 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 have a look at that later. See if it actually does become a problem. But then that'll produce these data cards. They're being produced. 100% rate, I think. Yeah. So these, these all, this is just working. And then we're putting in the fourth one here. Those are the ones that are coming from the probe launches. We can then turn those into, um, into data as, as, as usual over here. Put them on a belt. And again, as usual, it's being fed into a station up here. From there, we then pass it over to my science production facility over here. So we've got now we've got the fourth type of fourth type of, uh, of catalogue being brought in here. Now we don't have very many of those and we, I think we've run through them all so this belt is currently empty. But I did, oh yeah, we put enough in to get to get the system started to make sure everything was working happily. Those are brought up here. Um, and along here we've got the same sort of thing as normal. So we, as usual we've got the first tier, second tier, third tier, fourth tier of science packs being made because each, each subsequent tier requires some of the science packs from the previous tier in order to keep that running. So we need to keep passing those through. Um, and then we, uh, but, but for each of these also, you need all of the inputs. So you need significant data for absolutely everything, every single science, space science pack. You need the insights, that's the cylinder ones for all of the purple, the purple ones for all of the purple sciences. Then you need the specific catalog for that particular one. So this is a catalog one. So this is an energy catalog one, so it goes into this machine. And then you need the exotic material for that one as well. So we've got all of those being fed up here. Then the second one, the same idea, but the exotic material has some processing required on it. So down here, we're taking in plastic and iridium, no, not iridium, holmium, and making the cables. Um, these I've upgraded to um, manufacturers instead of the assembly machines I had in here before because they just weren't fast enough. We had a massive bottleneck here. Um, but this is now enough to keep up with the sub cable requirements here and the solenoid requirements here. However, for the fourth tier, that was a bit more difficult. That requires quantum processors. And a quantum processor requires lots and lots of inputs. <clears throat> As you can see here, we need to put in the polymium cable, polymium plates. We need one of the phenomenon datas, uh, quantum phenomenon data. We need processing units. We need all kinds of things going into this. So that's, that's a bit more difficult. So these ones I'm shipping in to another drop-off station over here. And they're being made along with all of the rest a lot of the rest of the um, science stuff they're being made with the energy science somewhere in here I forget where it was I put it oh I put it on over on the other side because there, there wasn't really room in a convenient place so what we've got here is we're tapping off the quantum phenomenon data that's being made um, here in order to go into the tier two is that tier two yes tier two energy catalogs here they're being piped off here going all the way across here being added to some um, blue circuits that I've managed that I'm pulling into here as well and then the holmium and holmium cables that we've got around here in massive quantities already because this is where most of the holmium gets used they can then be turned into the those uh, quantum processors here dumped into a station and then they're just on the bus as usual like everything else
And one of the other things I'm going to do with those is I'm going to bring them down here eventually when I get to that point because they're required for building supercomputers, which I've pulled up the, all the boxes for around here. So I'm going to need to start making, I'm, I'm going to bring them down here, put them onto the bus for making better supercomputers, and then I can go around and maybe, maybe I'll upgrade all of my supercomputers at that point. Or maybe I'll just do the ones that need, are needed for more advanced systems like, um, like up here where I'm formatting the memory cards in a slightly cleverer way, for example. Um, we're getting back a higher. We hit. This is the only place in the base, pretty much, I think, that I'm using the uh, the yellow supercomputers, because rather than just bit here, rather than just being faster, they can actually do a better recipe where it only breaks 20% of them instead of 30% of them. So there's a big improvement available there. So that's making the um, the science packs. They're now being dumped onto this belt down here, and I put in some. Um, a few little tweaks here and there to make the uh, system run a bit better uh, in order to get rid of the, um, the the duff data cards a bit more efficiently. And that's meant I've got to the point now where I've got all of all my belts are just completely full of the um, of all four of the energy sciences. And I'm doing so I feel like I'm doing really well here. They're pouring over into the into the sushi system over here as 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 before, where the tier four, as you can see here, is is ready to be loaded into this chest if we ever need it. But we've got enough going round and round in the belt here that we can just keep a steady stream of them going out. And so the sushi belt is, is combining them all into one belt here. And then when we're doing when we're actually doing research, they all get loaded into these into these um, into these science labs over here. Now, one problem I have found is that with the sheer amount of speed I'm getting from this beacon and the number of productivity modules I put in here, we're actually not one of these belts is not sufficient for running an entire. Um, uh, for running a lab at, this, at the speed they're going at. It's just too much. Uh, so we, we, what I mean, might need to do is have a second belt coming out of here and going up here as well. So we're feeding them. So we, we can we can double the throughput by having two belts coming out here. The only question is then how I'm going to feed all of the science back in over here. That's going to be a little bit more tricky. I could put it in here, but then we'd have to, but then we'd be trying to put two lots of um, all of the science packs through. We'd be trying to put almost two belts worth through this one belts worth of space here and that so it just wouldn't work um some rethinking might be required for this and just trying to get this to work in a different way um possibly i could oh i could ah here's a here's a thought i could split off here and have these two going in different one on up, e up each side of it so we've got these two belts being joined into one and these two belts being joined into one and then do something clever up here in order to make that make that work i don't know some thought is going to be required for that Alternatively, I could just go. Well, I'm researching at some sort of crazy speed anyway. Do I need to make need to make it any faster? Probably not. Let's just leave it as it is. Uh, we shall we shall see see how much it um, how much I feel it's, it, yeah, it's needs needs improving around there. So I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Um, this is uh, Factorio Space Exploration. These videos come out every Friday evening. Um, if you want, to, if you want to watch me streaming while I'm actually working on the on the factory, rather than just talking about what I've been up to, uh, please come along and join me on a uh, Tuesday evening. We start streaming at 7:30 UK time. So um, then I'll typically stream for three or four hours in an evening, depending on basically when I get tired and fall asleep. Um, so yeah, do come along and watch that. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get a notification when the when these episodes start, when the uh, streams are going to start, and when any new episodes come up as well, of course. On Thursdays we have Factorio Industrial Revolution, which is me and some of my friends trying to um, fight against the forces of biter and poor, biters and poor technology, and we're gradually working towards better and better science. So I'm hoping that soon we'll have artillery and we'll be able to, and the biters will stop being quite so much of a problem as they are at the moment. Then a couple of times a week, we're also I'm also releasing the um, GTA videos. That's uh, we're introducing new um, new game modes almost every week. So yeah, come along, watch those. See, see, see if you've got any suggestions or ideas. Let me know. We're always looking for new stuff to try. Um, and until then, until next week when the uh, the next one of these comes out. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for all of the all of the other stuff that goes on on the channel. I'll see you there. <laughs>